Hello, everybody. This is Radio Entrepreneurs, and every week we continue to stream stories of entrepreneurship, leadership, how people are dealing with this economy. And I think everybody knows by now that I love checking in with Sheriff Sharkey, as we call him on Radio Entrepreneurs. That's Phil Sharkey, president and owner of the Higher Authority, or the master of the lie. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. As you know, it's a, the pleasure of my month when we get together with, with our, our uh our conversations here. And I think I have a whole lot of stats for you going with your openings uh, statements or regarding the uh, situation for businesses. And these stats, Jeff, just for you are right off the presses from 2023. So my topic is going to be about the theft and fraud of employees and how we could try and limit that. And I got the numbers here to tell you why you should conduct background screening. A lot of clients don't, you know, a lot of clients just just go on a whim or, or just wing it. And it's not good enough, Jeff. It's bad for your bottom line. And I got numbers here to back that up. Right. All right. You ready for me? Oh, are you kidding? I'm, I'm sorry. I was already in a like a coma state watch, waiting for it all. <laughs> all right. These employee theft and fraud stats to me are really staggering. So the first one is, and as you know, in our background checks, we always tout that 30% turnout fraudulent that we screen. So the first stat that jumps out here is 75% of employees admit to stealing at least once from their employer. Uh, that's 75% of the people, uh, three quarters of your staff admitted they will steal from you at least one time. This was conducted by an insurance company called M Broker. They followed it up with employee theft and fraud is estimated to cost U.S. businesses up to $50 billion a year. That's a billion with a B. These are last year's numbers. So these numbers are outstandingly high to me to try and limit them by doing a simple background check seems almost like business 101. Why you wouldn't do it, I, I don't understand. And, and it frustrates me. And here's the one that really comes to my business. More than 30% of business bankruptcies are due to employee theft. Now, Jeff, I would actually defer to your knowledge regarding business management and consulting. That's a higher number than I envisioned. I thought businesses would fail not knowing their product, not knowing their market, market uh, change in the market. But 30%, one third of the businesses' bankruptcies are due strictly to employee theft. I mean, that's a giant red number to me. And I, and I can't believe that companies don't take the time to put a release down in front of someone, have them sign the release. Our business, again, I, I must get back to touting how we seem to be excelling compared to these large warehouse style background screening companies. You send me the release on today, Tuesday. We'll be done with the background on Thursday or Friday. You don't lose any lag time with bringing someone on board. And you don't have just that handshake where someone's saying, hey, Jeff, nice to meet you. I'm Phil Sharkey. And I'm lying to you. You will know. You will know if they are honest, if they have a past history, and you'll protect yourself by keeping this type of numbers out of your business. You know, Phil, immediately comes to mind food businesses that I've been associated with where people walked out with turkeys under their coats, right? prime ribs. Right. Uh, they feel entitled. They feel entitled. Retail food businesses where it's easy to take, you know, steaks, uh, things like that. Uh, you think about uh, re other retail businesses like hardware, where people work in hardware stores. I remember earlier in my career, uh, not really even a career, pre-career, I used to manage a camera store. And every time we did inventory, there was so much inventory missing. And I realized it was my associate who was building his own camera film empire when we used to have the kodachrome and the fuji right. film right and, you know it's it's really kind of unbelievable how people sort of subjectively define morality yes and and what they can and can't do if their compensation's right how they supplement their compensation uh i'm entitled to this jeff right there's that feeling of like well they don't pay me enough here i work 40 hours a week they don't value me, so I will value me by taking this or taking that or taking ideas, as you mentioned, uh, and fostering another business. And this is repetitive behavior. This doesn't usually just happen. As I've seen with many of our background checks, you find out there's a pattern and it's happened before and before to these people. And I used to do, uh, I'm not used to, I could still do it. I, you know, we do a lot of uh, strategic offsites and we usually start with some experiential learning. And there was an exercise I've always been quite fond of called the circle of truth, where we get people to sort of talk about the lies that they perpetuate at work. And we started off in the most benign manner so that everybody's admitting to the lie and we escalated. And by the end of the game, 
it's unbelievable what people are disclosing because they become acclimated to talking about their lies. Right. And, right. and, and, and it blows people away what people will lie about at work. Right. So lying, stealing, uh, since it's such a common element to our society, we need people like Phil Sharkey because we need to weed it out. Uh, my example would be some of these college protesters, sorry, who are probably going to have uh, an FBI record for civil di disobedience for the rest of their lives. I mean, if an employer doesn't want somebody like that potentially on their staff, you better do a background check because it's going to be on their record forever. Am I wrong? It, it, it'll be there. Uh, seven year history uh, for regular criminal checks. Uh, civil cases come back much further. Uh, FBI cases can go back much further. And again, to me, a background check, and I get a lot of pushback, Jeff, that I'm big brother, you're coming down, lay off. It, it's not about that. It's about finding the best candidate for you. Money's tight these days. Businesses are struggling. We're still not really clicking as an economy, are we? So you have to make sure your bottom line in any environment is, is correct. And to simply, a background check gives you knowledge and information, and it's your choice so how you can best use this. You may have two applicants that are very close. One is a perfectly clean background. The other one has red flags. And as one of these stats here, red flags are huge for us. It says 40% of employees stealing from work have had HR red flags prior. So 40%, this is a source, SHRM insurance company. So 40%, again, repetitive behavior that you can avoid. Heck, you don't even have to pay me to do it. Put down a release form in front of most people that are problems and they probably won't be back for the second interview. It's just good business. And a company like ours, we're so much better than the competition where it's a real hands-on approach. Just like we're having a conversation today, you can call, you can get feedback, you can get things done quickly. These large warehouse screening companies, people are waiting two weeks to even sign up. We're here, we take your information quickly. You get through to a person, you can talk to me or one of my senior level staff. And when you're done, and when you have questions on that applicant, I'm here to answer those questions. If there's, they plead no low contendere, if there's a strange charge, we can explain that to you and walk you through the process. And it's just an ease of serve, which I, I think is very important. I can't agree with you more. It's a simple cost, simple amount of time for a good insurance policy. Phil, are you going to give me a mind twister before you leave? Well, I got a famous, as you know, we like to wrap with a, a famous person. This one might be famous to our, our side of the globe here, but Liv Loberg. She was a, a top bureaucratic person for the Norwegian public sector. She was a reserve member of parliament for the Conservative Progress Party. Uh, she ex exaggerated her nurse's aid qualification and forged a resume to secure a plus job with the Norwegian Registration Authority for Health Personnel. She claimed to be a registered nurse, Jeff, and she had three decades in medicine, when in fact she had forged one Norwegian and two English certificates. That's all she had. So not only did she lose her job, but she was sentenced to 14 months imprisonment on account of her fraud. So the next time people just want to make stuff up, sometimes you're in a position that's high security. Any position really is important. And if you're a liar, you're a liar and it's going to come out in the wash. Trust me. Well, but we also know in our society, some liars are the most rewarded people that we, we know. That's a frustrating part of it. And I, I uh, one man trying to make a difference here and turn the tide on that for sure. So Phil, keep fighting the fight. If somebody wants you to fight for them, how do they find you? The best way is through the web, Jeff, uh, www.hireauth.com. That's H-I-R-E-A-U-T-H. You can call us toll free at 888-230-5901. And you actually get right through to a person uh, or get an immediate call back. Easy as can be. That's great. And remind everybody, you can see Phil Sharkey regularly on Radio Entrepreneurs, and there's a whole data bank of old interviews, too, you can go back and take a look at. Always entertaining, always Sheriff Sharkey.